In this tutorial, I'll show you how to paint the moon with a night sky in the background. I'm painting on a black canvas and I've masked off the moon using clear cover. You can also mask it off using masking tape. Although I'm using a reference photo which you can see in the bottom right hand corner, I'm merely going to use it as inspiration for my night sky. For the blue, I'm using cerulean, and for the red, I will use a mixture of crimson and orange. Don't be shy to completely alter your colors if you want to create a fantasy painting. You don't have to stick to my colors. The colors we see in the sky are formed by gas, and that creates like a smoky effect. So to recreate that effect on the canvas, I use a soft hairbrush and tiny amounts of paint on the brush at a time. I then apply the paint using little circular motions. I also only let the very tip of the brush touch the canvas while applying the lightest touch possible. As you can see, the paint then goes on very thin, giving it that smoky, transparent look that we need. This also allows me to build up multiple layers to make the gas in the Milky Way look more or less dense. You will also notice that I'm painting the Milky Way at an interesting angle instead of horizontally. Generally, I add the first layer of paint broad and then a little narrower with each subsequent layer. I also lighten the color by adding white to the mix for the final layers. And this creates that lovely glowing effect. To paint the stars is extremely easy. I use a hardware brush to splatter on the stars. To get a good splatter, you need to thin your paint down with water. The more water you add, the bigger the drops will be. So I recommend that you test your splatter on a piece of paper to the side of the canvas to make sure that you're happy with the size of the stars before you move on to the canvas. Add more stars along the length of the Milky Way and less to the top and to the bottom to add that fullness effect to the Milky Way. And feel free to use several different colors of stars as that keeps the sky interesting and vibrant. I do, however, tend to use more white than the other colors to make sure that the sky remains bright. When doing splatter like this, always lay your canvas flat and then leave the splatter to dry before you continue painting. You can see how some of my splatter has run because I've had to paint upright. Now let's move on to painting the moon. I've added a moon into our reference photo so you can get an idea of what it will look like. I start off by creating a mottled effect over the entire surface of the moon. And this will become the dark crater areas when we are done. To create this effect, I watered down white paint to the consistency of an ink. I then randomly scrubbed this paint onto the surface of the moon in layers. I then use a hair dryer to dry the paint in between each layer. So I'll add two layers for the darker crater mottled effect and then move on to painting the brighter areas. If you look at the photo, you'll see that there are very few even tonal values. Even here, everything is mottled. So for us to recreate this effect, we'll continue to build up the layers. But with each layer, I add a little bit more paint into that original white watered down mix. And that makes each subsequent layer look a little bit brighter than the previous. As with the sky, you can see I'm only suggesting the shapes and the craters on the moon using a rough and random scrubbing motion. As I build up the layers, I start to concentrate on getting the moon to look round like a ball. The moon is brightest at the 4 o'clock area and darkest around the 10 o'clock area. To add the illusion of distance, I add some trees to the foreground using black paint. So I'll add a trunk at the center of the tree and then suggest some leaves using a zigzagging motion. Notice how I've added each tree at a different angle to keep it interesting. To add a bit of dimension to the trees, I'll use a low-key green to add a little bit of highlights into each tree. 
But notice, I'm keeping them really low key because I don't want the trees to compete for attention with the night sky. The night sky is the focus point in this painting. And there we have it. Now you know how to paint the night sky. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. If you have, please subscribe and don't forget to like the video. See you next time.